We have Hurricanes head coach Gino Damari. Gino, if you can please start with an opening statement, and then we'll go into questions. Well, I just thought we played a pretty clean game, really all three games. I don't know if we made an error all weekend. I don't think we did last night or today. I can't remember the first game. But, you know, just all around, good good uh, starts from the first two nights. Uh, today was uh, we knew it was going to throw a few more guys because we're limited without Ligon throwing. So Ronnie came out of the gate good, throwing first seven guys, seven up, seven down. Um, but, you know, every pitcher that came in out of the pen threw excellent. And uh, our offense put up some runs, put up some big numbers. Uh, obviously had some more home runs today. And um, like I said, played good defense. Just a clean overall game. And, and basically a clean weekend, and that's you know what we need to do in these, this situation here. And so, you know, uh, we finish up exams here in the next few days, and then, and then it's all baseball. You know, it's all focus on baseball, and it's getting close to that time. And of course, like Yo-Yo said, we got FIU on Wednesday. We just want to be in a good mindset, mentally, physically, and you know, playing our best baseball here at the end. Coach, uh, your your strike your um, pitching staff had nearly forty strikeouts this weekend. I mean, how encouraging is it to see uh, your pitching staff be able to set up the hitting so well, and, and that to go vice versa as well? Yeah, you know, it's it's it hasn't worked that way this year. Uh, that's that's what you want. You want your starters to you know throw well and be efficient and go kind of deep, somewhat deep into the game. Six innings for me is deep. That's deep. That's good. If we could get that and. Uh, and we were able to get that from our first couple guys. Obviously, today we weren't going to get that from Ronnie because he's on a pitch count. But um, we're swinging the bat, you know, for the most part, pretty good. Obviously, a lot of our runs have come by power and home runs, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You can't defend that. I've always said it. So it's the best play in baseball, Coach Frazier used to say, because no, there's no defense for it. And you need to jog around the bases. But, um, yeah, I mean, we're swinging the bat, I think, uh, better of late in the last month or so, you know. and. Uh, if we can, and we've been defending really, I think all year long. I think I saw a stat the other day, we're second in the ACC maybe in uh, fielding percentage, uh, which is the highest we are in any category. Looking at all the categories that Josh gives me, um, the one has been the pitching, there's no doubt. And so point taken there that we have, uh, yeah, th this is the time we need our guys to be polished up. And, uh, you know, if we can put that together with what I just said, the hitting in the defense, yeah, boy, it'd be interesting to see how far we can go. And then with the base running, have you noticed that progress as well? I mean, I know CJ yeah. was picked off the other night, uh, but what what's kind of what have you noticed in terms of that being a focal point, or to at least look toward going to the ACC championship soon? Well, base run is not just st stealing bases. If it was, we'd be in trouble because that's not our strength. It just isn't. We we have to be honest with ourselves. It's just not something that we do very well as a team. I mean, we can pick our spots here and there, but. Certainly not has been the way that I would hoped it would be, but base running to me is more than that. It's instincts, it's reading balls off the bat, getting jumps, running on balls in the dirt, which we normally do a pretty good job of. We scored, I think uh, the other night, uh, first night maybe, Gabby scored maybe our fourth or fifth run, if I'm not mistaken, a ball didn't get far away from the catcher. Uh, and, uh, you know, usually our guys that do that very well is, is Dom, CJ, and Yo-Yo. They, they read balls in the dirt excellent. And uh, in advance, and so you could take that as a stolen base or however you want to look at it. It's advancing to the next base, and we're all trying to get around and get to the home plate. It's the most important thing. So, from a base running standpoint, we can always improve on everything. Certainly get better there. I just the stolen base thing is a tough one, and I do not want to give outs on the bases by doing that just to be frustrated and have an ego. Oh, we need to steal because we're not stealing. It's just we just have to pick our times. That's all. And. Uh, when you're hitting home runs, you do not want to make outs on the bases. You want to leave those guys on the bases. And I'm not a station to station guy, but this team happens to be kind of in that kind of in that mold a little bit. You'll see us run three one, three two counts. We'll do that. We did that today, and then we hit a fly ball uh, to right field, which we don't want to do. But so there's a lot of facets to base running, uh, more so than stolen bases. Thank goodness. Alejandro Rosario had uh, 12 strikeouts last night, tied a career high. I believe it is the second time in the last four starts he's had. Um, what's inspired you about the mentality he's had going on the mound with his approach each and every time this year? Well, he's certainly grown since uh, his first few years. He, he, he's gotten, he's matured, and, it, and he's, it's been tough. Let's be honest. He's faced more adversity than any player, especially his caliber. And, uh, you know, this year's been tough on him, but I think he's handled himself really well. Uh, I like the fact that the last outing he was, uh, 
I thought he was even more focused. He's just, just really locked in on what he needed to do. And, you know, he has a tendency sometimes to have his, you know, his eyes in the dugout and, and wanting that feedback from the dugout and kind of like, he needs to focus on the pitter and with our catcher. That's it. He don't need to focus on anything else. And the pitch he's throwing and then move on to the next pitch. And that's it. And I thought he did an excellent job of that. He located, he threw a lot of fastballs last night. And he located it. And looking at the video this morning, the game back, he had a lot of movement. And he was able to throw to both sides of the plate. Didn't throw many change-ups. Didn't have to. Uh, breaking ball was okay. At times very good. At times not so good. So his off-speed stuff, no doubt, he's going to need to be able to polish that up and be consistent with that with really good hitting teams. But everything starts with his fastball. And he located it very well. I don't care who was hitting against him last night. If he locates his fastball like that, he'll be very difficult, uh, again, with, with his off-speed stuff. But um, his demeanor was excellent, I thought, last night. It was the most focused, I think, I can recall, where he never looked in the dugout, didn't get any agitation with the umpire, nothing, just total pitch by pitch. I thought he did a great job of being locked in. And then driving in hits on the ground it seemed to be a lot of balance with that and the home run ball this weekend. How do you think that can kind of carry forward as a strength for this team as the season winds down? Driving hits on the ground? Yes. Well, we had some. We also hit some balls in the – yeah. So, I guess today maybe we did. But we've, we, we've done a good job situational hitting. I don't, I, if, just thinking about some different at-bats throughout the weekend. I mean, we had some guys on third with the infield in, and we got the ball up in the air and got guys in. I think we had that today, didn't we? Not second and third infield in with Eddie up, and he hit a line drive. The right fielder didn't quite get to it. I think that was right. But, but you're also right. We, and you're not trying to hit ground balls unless the infield's back. That's a situation when you got a man on third, less than two outs in the infield's back, we want to hit ground balls. But you know, there's a lot of times where we're telling the guys to backspin the ball and get inside it, try to get a pitch they can you know, get in the air, um, which I thought our guys did a good job. So, yeah, those are things, aside from the home runs, Kind of to your point, you know, whether it's ground balls or line drives, our guys have done a good job of situational hitting, you know, and again, a lot of that is clutch hitting. Look, they made an error today, right, with two outs. They should have been out of the inning. They made an error, I think, with Yo-Yo got jammed, and then we got hitter. The next three guys, I believe, clutched up, and we knocked in runs with those next three guys with two outs. Good teams do that. Take advantage of other teams' mistakes. Good teams do that, and that was something that I was happy to see today. Anything else for Gino? Coach, when it comes to Gallo, he uh, he was cruising there through the first two innings and then ran a little bit into a little bit of trouble. So what were you seeing on the mound? Exactly. So the first seven hitters, I thought he was cruising. I would say that's a good word. He was throwing well. Uh, and just told him down there with the team, and the eighth hole hitter is hitting 214, and he uh, walked him. And then the uh, ninth hole, I think he had the, got the leadoff guy out, so he had one out. The eighth hole hitter, you can't walk the eighth hole hitter. It's hitting 214. Subsequently, he goes the next guy's the ninth hole hitter hitting 214 as well, and he went 3 1 count to him. Can't do that. Then he had to throw a ball over the plate, and the guy ends up hitting a double, and I think he created second and third, if I'm not mistaken, or whatever it created, maybe first and second. That's where it opened up, and then the next guy, I believe, got a hit and knocked some guys in. So, you know, that's where he got into trouble. You can't walk the eighth hole hitter that's hitting. You got to go right after those guys, and you don't want to fall behind, like I just said, with the ninth hole hitter going 3 1. To me, it wasn't the hit that gave up the runs. It's those two guys and how they got on base. Well, that's a concentration and focus thing. You got to stay in that moment there, each pitch, and make sure you don't get into those positions. Should never happen with the eight, nine hole hitter that's a hitting 214. You go after those guys and you get ahead of those guys. That shouldn't happen. Jason Torres this weekend, just can you comment on what you saw out of him and his approach at the plate going into this kind of series where it wasn't an ACC opponent, but he was able to really have a lot of composure? Yeah, I would say that was you know he looked he looked good in the field for the most part. And not no tough plays, but when he played in the defense, he made some plays. One play he should have made last night to his left that he didn't get to. But uh, offensively, yeah, I mean uh, I thought he looked really comfortable and he was hitting balls all over the place. I, I think if I'm not mistaken, he had, of course the grand slams the left center. He got some hits down the right field line and he hit some balls up the middle. I think and so. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, Jason is a highly touted guy, a recruit that we brought in that's playing behind arguably one of the all-time good, great players for UM. So, you know, for him to play at third is a little tough. Uh, but Yo-Yo uh, not being able to play in the game, first couple games of the series got an opportunity and really took advantage of it so much so that I started him today as a DH when Yo-Yo came back, which we have platooned that position quite a bit. I'm still trying to figure out who can be our DH. and. 
until I figure that out, we'll platoon guys and, and uh, match up what we think might be the best matchup for that pitcher and the hitter. But Jason has probably earned himself a chance to be, be that guy for right now with all, you know, with the at-bats that he gave. So um, it's like anything. You get an opportunity, you got to take advantage of it. And I think he's done a very good job of that this weekend. You mentioned it being exam week and everyone trying to finish up well in the classroom as well. Uh, what's the mood like in the locker room after this one? Well, good. Uh, you know, uh, excited, not overly excited, nothing crazy. I wasn't doing any cartwheels. There was a broom right in front of my face. I don't know how that got there, but uh, there's jokesters there. But uh, no, I thought they were pretty composed. You know, I thought they handled business. You know, this is what we should do, it's what we're supposed to do. I thought we, you know, sometimes you, you know, you can. It's not big crowds. It's not a, you know, a highly ranked opponent. We're in exam week, but I thought our guys stayed very, very even keeled and focused, which is not easy so, sometimes, you know, in these weeks and guys are 18, 19, 20 years old and got obviously exams and they're student athletes and they get the pressures of dealing with all that stuff. And so I thought they handled themselves fine. And, you know, we gave them a few days off, you know, during the week and we're going to do that. Well, we'll give them a day off tomorrow, which they always get. And then Tuesday will be uh, a very light practice. Uh, and of course, I think Wednesday we might have one or two guys exams. That's the last day. And then, like I said earlier, and then, then that's it. But, you know, we'll monitor them. It's the end of the season. We're not going to be out here having four-hour practices and everything. You can tell guys are excited. We're getting closer to that, that, that time. You know, it's the end of the year. I just asked them how many games do we have left. They all knew. They knew exactly how many games we had left. They shouted out real quick, eight games. And uh, so, but uh, Yo Yo's right. FIU, we need to not look ahead of them because we want to keep, obviously, putting ourselves in a position where uh, – we haven't talked about it a lot. I have not talked about it a lot, but we're in a good position where we have a chance to host. And, uh, you know, if we play really, really well down these last eight games, maybe even be a super regional host like we were last year, which nobody has talked about really a whole lot this year. But the team's certainly in that position. But I think the best thing is just to focus on, you know, the right frame of mind of just playing good baseball. No need to get ahead of ourselves or think of all those things. And, uh, yeah, I, th I think our guys are in the, the, right, the right spot. Mentally. Coach, you had mentioned uh, platooning uh, for DH. Is that a good problem to have, trying to figure out with all the different guys you've got that are capable of hitting up and down the lineup? Well, it is. It's a good problem to have that we have a lot of players. Offensively, we have a lot of depth. So that's a good problem to have, certainly. you got, we got to, Look, we've made moves throughout the year, if you've watched us late in the game, in crucial situations, not just these blowouts, but crucial situations. Just go back to Louisville. And... Gab, Gabby Gutierrez comes in and clutches up. Dorian Gonzalez comes in and clutches up. And they're coming in for different reasons, but, you know, they're making – I'm just using those as an example. We've had other guys, Renzo, and the list goes on. Um, I mean, in a perfect world, you'd like to have one lineup and just go with it all the time. But that's that just doesn't happen very often. Because if you have one lineup, that means those guys are consistent and they're doing their job all the time. That's hard to do throughout the year, nine guys. So um, I don't have a problem with, you know, mixing and matching. And, you know, uh, our guys have done a good job of when you put them in, they're ready to play. You know, if they're pouting, I can't tell. Certainly they aren't taking it to the field. So uh, I, I, I see guys competing for the most part when they come into the games. And, um, but, yeah, I mean, I'd like to have some consistency there. But some guys' strengths are better hitting against a righty than a lefty. And some are better off hitting off a lefty and right. We have the ability and flexibility to do that. And it's not always left and right, by the way. It's all kinds of different things. It might be a sinker ball guy or a guy works up and it might be a breaking ball guy. Well, then we're going to put that guy that's our offensive guy that meets that strength up against that pitcher. And, again, that's why it's good to have that flexibility with different guys off the bench. And we have it defensively. We got it running-wise. And we got it with some hitters and some power. So it, it's it got 18 hitters. You know, we have 19 hitters, but one's unhealthy right now, so one's not playing. He's been scratched for a while. So, but we have 18 hitters, and so that's a whole other lineup that we can put out there. And when we have these blowouts, sometimes you see us, we basically can empty and put another nine guys out there that are really good players. Awesome. Thanks, Shane. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Coach. Congrats on the win.